All right, hi everyone. Um, today we're gonna be talking about the App Store and the Play Store, which is, it's mostly used on your phone as Lorianne was saying, but you can also access it on your, your computer too. Uh, it's a pretty basic session, so we're just gonna hop right in. The App Store and Play Store are pre-installed applications where consumers can buy and access a variety of apps, ranging from games to media, entertainment, organization, and more. There's so many apps out there on the App Store, like people could really make an app out of anything. It's, it's amazing the kind of stuff they come up with. Throughout this presentation, we will learn about their minor differences, what each has to offer, as well as security and privacy features. All right, so first off with the App Store on Apple devices. The App Store is used to discover and download apps on an iPhone, iPod Touch, MacBook, and iPad. As an extension of iPhone apps, some can be transferred to an Apple Watch and newer Apple TVs. Some apps are either free of charge or require a payment in order to download, and we'll go over the difference between those in a bit. The App Store ensures that the apps provided are secure in terms of privacy, security, and content. App Store history. So Apple introduced the App Store on July 10th, 2008. When the original iPhone was released, there was no App Store and no third-party apps. That is, the App Store as we know it today was not included with the first Apple phone. Apple went from having no apps to having hundreds of them overnight. It's kind of weird to think about <laughs> not having an app store. Like if you, if you think about like deleting the app store, what would you do if you, <laughs> if you deleted it? Basic info about the app store. The app store has five options, including today, games, apps, arcade, and search. The today page includes the apps and games most popular in the app store at the moment. The games option, which is, come on, that's where we all want to go. It provides games separated by categories, for example, puzzles, adventure and action, and more. In apps, there are apps that are not considered games, such as Hulu, Netflix, uh, Facebook, and Amazon. And the arcade is a unique application found only on the Apple App Store, where you can download games for a monthly fee of $4.99. So you pretty much have access to a bunch of games just for a monthly subscription. And lastly, there's a search bar where you can just search for a specific app if you know the app's name already. All right, uh, some more basic info. In order to use the App Store, you must have an Apple ID and a valid form of payment. When setting up any Apple product, you will be asked to provide an existing Apple ID or create a new one, which can easily be set up on a new Apple device or on the Apple support webpage. It is important to include a valid form of payment to make any future purchases through the App Store easier. And although your device has your payment information saved, it can't be used without your permission. How to use the Apple Store. It's a pretty basic feature to use. It's usually located on the home screen. Of course, every device is gonna have an app, an app store. It's located on the home screen. It looks like a blue icon with a capitalized A with kind of like three sticks coming together. And the first thing to appear after opening the App Store is the home page, where you will see the five categories, which as I said earlier, are today, games, apps, arcade, and search, located at the bottom of the screen. Once you've found an app that you'd like to download, there's going to be a blue button that says the word get. A security measure will come up on your screen asking for your Apple ID password to confirm. If the app requires payment, you'll be asked if you're sure of this purchase and it will give you the precise amount before you press OK. Once the app says open, it means it has successfully downloaded onto your device. They make sure there's a clear distinction between the free apps and the paid apps. They really want to make sure that you know what you're paying for and that you're paying for it in the first place. All right, pricing. So keep in mind when using the App Store that there are an equal number of free apps as there are costly apps. Luckily, the App Store makes it easy to tell apart which ones are free and which require payment. As I said earlier, before clicking on an app, there will either be a get option or it will display a price in place of the get option. The apps that only require a download are free and the ones with prices require payment. You can see that on the right side with the little image, two of the apps say the word get. Those are clearly the free ones, and the other two have a price attached to them, which means you've got to pay for them. Oh, returning purchased apps. If you don't like the app that you purchased and want to return it, you can do so. Apple app customers have a right of return for applications of up to 90 days after purchase. The process is handled independently of the developer or support, which means it happens between the purchaser, the person who purchased the app, and Apple. It doesn't matter who, like, let's say a certain company creates an app, they're not going to be involved in the return process. And I think that money is going to go back to Apple.
uh, visit this website and input your Apple ID and password to start the return process. If you reach out within the two weeks of the purchase, it will be canceled right away. If you want to return a free app, you can simply delete it. So security. So as we said before, Apple takes some precautionary security measures to make sure that the apps that are posted on their app store are safe for your, for your device. Some apps have malware, which is software designed to cause damage to your device. Software being the program that operates your device, making sure it works properly. Not all software is dangerous. However, all malware is. It's specifically made to cause damage to your device. So Apple carefully protects your information if an app requires any. The App Store is designed to let you download apps without having to worry about getting any viruses, malware, or unauthorized attacks. So the settings in the App Store. There are a couple of different ways to access your account settings. The first way is by tapping your name at the top of the App Store account screen to set or change your settings for the App Store. So you would go into the App Store and then you would find your profile and then you would just change the, the settings through the App Store. Or you can go to settings, the main settings app on your phone or other device and select the App Store. The App Store option, which is shown in the top right of the slide, where you can view and edit your account with more options for automatic downloads and even offload apps, which means kind of like getting rid of the data in apps that you don't really use that much so that it's not taking up storage on your phone. And you can adjust personalized recommendations, subscriptions, your country and region, and more. So Mac computers also have access to the App Store. The main difference between the App Store on the iPhone versus the Mac is the iTunes Store. On an iPhone or iPad, you can find a variety of things in the iTunes Store, such as music, films, podcasts, and so on, whereas the Mac App Store is usually limited to these applications. Sometimes apps available on iPhone and iPad will not appear in the Mac App Store. So basically, some, some apps are only compatible with mobile devices and not your laptops. You can also download apps for Macs directly from the app's website. For example, Zoom. So if you wanted to download Zoom, you have two options. You could either go to the app store on your laptop and then search Zoom, or you can just Google Zoom download or just Zoom itself. And on the first website you see, it'll give you an, a link to download Zoom. So we're gonna move on to the Google Play Store, which is more for Android devices instead of Apple devices. The Play Store, or otherwise known as Google Play, Google Play Store, same thing. It's really similar to the App Store. It's an application used to make both purchases and downloads of things, such as games, music, movies, and more. While the App Store can only be used for Apple products, the Play Store is compatible with Android devices, including Samsung, Pixel, Fire tablets, and more. So the Google Play Store was first launched on March 6, 2012, a little bit after the Apple Store. It was a huge change for Android users because before this launch, Android users had to get apps, games, movies, and TV shows from a bunch of different places like the Android Market, Google Music, Google eBook Store, and so on. So what they pretty much did was just merged everything into one, like a digital supermarket, and just put everything into the Play Store so you wouldn't have to access different apps to find something, pretty much. So in order to download apps from the Play Store, you must have a Google account, just like you would need an Apple account for the App Store. To create one, first go to the Google account sign-in page, which you can find with a quick Google search. Then you would click create an account and enter your name. In the username field, enter a username you will remember. After that, you must create and confirm your password, then click next. For better security, you will have the option to enter a phone number. This step is optional. So by entering your phone number, it's if you're logging in on another device, it'll send your, your phone a text saying, hey, are you, it'll either send your text a code that you would have to enter in onto the device, or you can set it up. So you, it sends your phone a little message saying like, is this you, there's like a MacBook at this IP address and you just confirm that it's you. And then after all that, you would click next and you'll be all set. So adding a payment method on the Play Store is pretty simple, just like the App Store. Before making your first download, you must set up your form of payment. This process should not take longer than a minute, or, a minute or two. To begin, you must first open the Play Store app and tap on your profile, located in the, in the top right corner of your screen. Select the option that says Payment and Subscriptions. 
Now all you have to do is follow the on-screen instructions. Something interesting to note here is that there's a lot of different ways to pay for apps on the Play Store. You can add a credit or a debit card, you can add PayPal or Google Redeem and Google Play Credit, which is just Google's digital form of currency. To search for specific apps on the Google Play Store, you would use the search bar at the top of the screen and type in the name of an app or a keyword. In order to download something to your device, you would click on the app, then press install. Once your download is complete, you'll receive a notification letting you know that your download is finished and you're able to use the app. Google Play also makes its pricing very easy to distinguish between the free apps and the costly apps. If there is a price to the right of an app or product, then payment is required to download the app. Google Play does offer more ways to pay, as I said earlier. You must go through your payment settings where you can choose to make a payment with either a credit card, debit card, PayPal, or a gift card. On a computer, you would go to that link and select order history. Find the order you want to return, select request a refund or report a problem and choose the option that describes the situation. So this is how you would um, return purchased apps. On an Android device, you can open the Google Play app, tap the menu button and tap on my account. You'd scroll down to the my order section, select the app you want refunded and follow the steps provided. If you want to return a free app, you can simply delete it and it will be removed from your device. So if you want to delete a free app, there's no requirement to go through this whole request a refund thing because there's no refund for a free app. So it's really basic. All right, so a little bit about the security of the Google Play Store. Obviously it is designed to keep your device safe and secure. You don't want to be downloading random apps that are going to give your, your device a virus or some kind of other issue. Before downloading an app, the Play Store will check for any potential harmful downloads and will warn you if anything has been detected. This should automatically disable the app before any malfunction occurs. And just like the App Store, you can access the Play Store settings to control a lot of things. The settings to view and edit in the Play Store can be found in the app itself or under general settings. You'd launch the Play Store app and open the settings menu under your profile icon where you will find more settings and preference options. You can adjust auto updates, purchase identification, parental controls, and more. So auto updates, just to clarify some of the terminology on this slide, every now and then applications will have an update. So like, let's say for a game, a, a game might add in like a new character to the game. So they'll have to update the app and you'll have to go into the app store and update it. But if you enable auto updates, that game will keep automatically updating, adding new characters without you having to do anything. And purchase identification, that's just letting you know that you're purchasing something. And parental controls, that's for parents used to, to make sure their kids aren't downloading any games that are not meant for kids. All right, so the difference between the two, they're very similar, but besides the format in which they're set up, there's not much of a difference or nothing that really matters at all. If you own an Apple product, your best choice would be the App Store. And if you own an ad Android device, you're probably gonna be using the Google Play Store. Note that some applications are only available on the App Store, while others are only on the Play Store. So just like the fact that some applications could only be used on phones versus laptops, there's also apps that can only be downloaded on Google Play versus the App Store. Android only apps. Okay, so we're gonna go over some of the, the apps that you could only find on the Google Play Store, which in include ringtones and wallpaper. This app allows you to customize a unique look for your screen and re regularly updates your phone with new sounds. Greenify is a free battery boosting app, which allows you to use your, your device while another app is hibernating. This prevents your phone from slowing down and losing battery. Some of the, the apps that you would only find on the App Store are Drafts. It's an ideal app for a quick slash locked journal, as well as a handy editor and writing automation tool. Also on the, only on the App Store is the voice recorder and audio editor. It allows you to create unlimited recordings with editing features to quickly start and stop recording and auto transcribe audio files. All right, so now that we've finished this presentation, I'm just gonna go quickly through what it looks like to access and use the App Store. I have a, a MacBook, so it's gonna be the App Store and not the Google Play Store. The App Store is right here. 
with uh, the letter A looking, looking icon. You'd click on the App Store to open it. There are a lot of um, categories, a lot more categories on the Mac App Store compared to the phones because we set, we saw in the slides that there was like five categories. Now there is, or nine with the search bar. So infinitely better. There is a discover page, which just allows you to, it allows you to see the apps that Apple, the company recommends for people. It, it's a bunch of different apps for different, um, different with different functions. The arcade, which is the fun stuff. Uh, you can see on the, the page right now, it gives you unlimited access to 180 plus ad-free games with no in-app purchases. It's a lot of fun little things, but you do have to pay a monthly fee of $4.99. There's a create tab right here. This is more for people who like the artsy people who want to cr create digital art. And okay, this is a good... um. Good example of the difference between the free apps and the, the paid for apps. You can see in the middle row, there's a Corel Draw, which is a graphic design software that's free. And right below it, you see there's Affinity Photo, which is 55 bucks for an app. And it, it's pretty interesting to see what this, wow, that's actually re some really cool stuff. You could kind of see why it costs $55. And if you go through this app, there's a lot of details on the apps page to see if you really want to buy this. So if you scroll down a little bit after looking through the photos, you'll see this description right here. I'm going to try to highlight it. It's the Mac app of the year winner. It's you, There's a bunch of advantages of using this app as listed here. So you can basically go through a lot of details of the app. And one of the best things, I think, is going through customer reviews. So every app's webpage will have reviews left by people who have used the app before. So you can see this app has a 4.3 out of five star rating, which is pretty good. And it's honest feedback from people who've actually used the app. They'll, instead of giving just a number, you can see they'll actually give qualitative feedback. And you can go through all those. That blue button on the right side of the screen that says version history, that was the whole updates thing that I was talking about. So every now and then, let's see, two days ago, four months ago. Yeah, so you can see every now and then the app developer will release an update that gives an app new features. So you, these those new features are listed here, such as stability and performance improvements, optimized for Mac OS Monterey, which is another update for a Mac. So yeah, you can go through all that. And there's some general information about the seller and the size of the apps on the bottom. Yeah, so let's try downloading an app. We'll download Zoom. But we could try downloading a game. We're going to download SpongeBob Patty Pursuit because that looks like a lot of fun. And it's St. Patty's Day, so that really works out. All right, so you can see this little button that says try it for free. I'm going to click on that. All right, but okay, I'm not going to buy the subscription, but hopefully you guys kind of get the idea. It's pretty simple to use. You're going to click on those white buttons that say either get or try it for free or any of the, the paid options. Thank you for listening, everyone.